Hi book friends, I'm Erin, this is Ruby, and this is Erin Go Read. Welcome to another reading vlog. It is still October. I'm doing Black Awinathon. I am doing Book Driver Bingo. I am doing Victober. And currently I'm playing at the park with Charlie Hi. and our friend and our friend Ruby. Hi. <laughs> Stay tuned for more reading action. Saturday afternoon. I'm reading The Woman in White. I just read a good 20 pages or so and I am, um, let's see, I'm on page 164. I'm through the first three like narrators, people's tellings. The story gets passed off from one person to the next and actually this next section is told by the same person. It's just after a certain event has happened. So in this story we have these two sisters uh, who live together with the uncle of one of the sisters like they have different they have different dads there's a whole thing um one of them is set to be married and the woman in white gets kind of entangled in this so mr hartwright who was their uh, like art professor um on his way to go be their teacher at their house he encountered the woman in white who later they find out has actually escaped from an asylum and she had previous um like contact with this household. So she's now, she then sends a letter saying that Laura should not marry the guy that she's going to marry, Mr. Percival. Percival? Percival Glide is his name. And there's kind of like a love triangle situation happening a little bit. She had promised her husband, her, her dad, it was like her dad's dying wish or whatever, her, her dad set up this engagement between Laura and Percival. And so Laura is very much like she's going to do it because that's what her dead dad wanted. Um, but she actually falls in love with Mr. Hartwright and it's like this heartbreaking situation. So now we're kind of this last whole bit has just been kind of the um, the logistics of is the wedding actually going to happen? She, um, her sister tells her, like, you've got to tell Percival that you're actually in love with somebody else and then let it be on him if he wants to, if he wants to call off the engagement or not, because Laura won't do it because she made this promise to her dad. Um, and so we have not heard anything of the lady in white for a while. Um, and the wedding since has just happened. So that's where we are in the story. Um, I'm looking forward to more of the woman in white. Um, Marion, the sister, is has been the, the most recent narrator, and she's going to be narrating this next uh, portion as well. And she's a really, really cool, um, really, really great character. She's way more of an interesting character than Laura, the bride, actually is. My beautiful sleeping boy. So other than sleeping, I've basically been sedentary for the last 24 hours. And so um, I'm going to walk on the treadmill while I tackle the last 30 pages or so of the memoir. So this should probably be the last full read through and edit. Um, I'm finding like things where just like letter um, numbers that need to be spelled out or there's some weird like spacing things here and there. Um, M dash versus ellipsis versus comma, that kind of thing. Making comments to my editor about like, does this need to be changed? Um, things like that. Um, and then just every now and then I'll find like a word. I'd rather use this word instead of, you know, something was 
very whatever finding a word to replace that or just little bits like that um every now and then i'll just find a word that like ah, i don't like the way i worded that and so i'll do it differently and every now and then there just has been something that's like what how did we both miss that before so it's been a good reread and so i've got about 30 pages to go and uh, i can't believe i'm this far i'm this far through it so we're actually like our next the next, my next discussion with my coach slash editor is really going to be about the publishing process. Are we going to go with a hybrid publisher where I basically pay to have them publish my book? Um, what are my options? And uh, yeah, it's really, it's really exciting. I can't wait to get to the point where I can actually sell this book and share it with people. <laughs> I just fell through a punctuation rabbit hole. Did you know that there's something as an N dash, which is different than an M dash, which is also different from ellipses or different rules for all three, all throughout the entire manuscript. But it's supposed to be an M dash, which I use quite liberally. I like it stylistically. I have actually used an N dash or just a hyphen. So I have to go through the entire manuscript and fix all of those occasions. Also, I don't think I use the ellipsis correctly at once. I think every time I have an uh, I think every time I have an ellipsis, it's actually supposed to be an M dash. So I've just sent off a Loom video to my editor to ask her, like, hey, make sure I have this rule correct so I can go back and fix it because I can fix it for free rather than having to pay her to fix it. But other than that, content wise, I am through the entire manuscript. That feels really good. I just have a few questions that I left in the comments um, for my editor. And other than that, like content wise, it's done. Like <laughs> The manuscript is done. So that feels super, super good. I just can't wait to like get it into people's hands and have, have, yeah, be able to talk about it with people in, in, in more than like this way where I know what I'm talking about and you don't know what I'm talking about yet. I'm enjoying this, but I do kind of wish we would like get on with the plot a little bit. I'm not even halfway through and it's, it's been a while. It's been a while since we've seen the woman in white. Every now and then she's referenced, but for the most part, we haven't, we haven't seen or heard of her and nothing spooky has happened really at all so could we get on with it hey guys it's midday on tuesday i was just sitting down actually i just was getting distracted from reading a blade so black which i started this yesterday during black Aweenathon sprints i think it was on ashley's channel at bookish realm black Aweenathon is a uh readathon to encourage you to read black authors writing crime so suspense horror whatever that kind of stuff and a blade so black is a um like a alice in wonderland um not remake but like retelling kind of thing um so that is alice and she has to go into like basically wonderland to kill nightmares and she ha helped keep like the balance of not letting too many nightmares um like enter into our world so i'm very early days uh in this what I'm on page 65 or so so most of that was read during the sprints last night um but i was completely not on my tbr and the sprints just popped up and actually made it a point was like hey if you're on black weenathon sprints you at the very least need to be reading a black author and i realized i don't think i have a single black author on my entire october tbr and so i went and grabbed that and initially i was going to read that for this project that didn't go anywhere it's called down the rabbit hole and the idea was I started with Alice in Wonderland and then that was going to be the second book. And then I was going to read like this book made me think of this book, which made me think of this book. And then just like see where I went, started with Alice and then where would I, I would end up with. But that never went anywhere because literally I read like the first 10 pages of this and then completely forgot about it. So anyway, I wanted to share something like weird that happened this morning. So early this morning, I get a... A Facebook message that just is from this guy that says hi and so I just replied hey and he's like what are you doing tonight I'm like I'm working at the gym 
Anyway, he ends up asking me out to dinner tonight, which I was like, like super weird. Like if you're new to my channel, my husband died two and a half years ago. Uh, we were high school sweethearts and this, like I'm entertaining the idea of a date for the first time. I haven't had a first date since I was 17. Sam and I broke up for about five months at one point and I went on one date, not one date, I, I went on a handful of dates with one other guy. So I've only had two first dates in my life. And so I'm like contemplating the idea of like having a first date. And then I realized like, I don't really know who this guy is though. We're Facebook friends. We have like 20 mutual friends, but like it's starting to feel really weird and like fast. And so I like took a screenshot and I sent it to my friend and I'm like, okay, I'm freaking out. Like, is this weird? What's happening? And she's like, scammer, stop talking to him. Um, and then I like, I went back and I realized that like all the people we're friends with is like completely from like, totally different walks of life it's not like 15 of the 20 mutual friends are all like high school people and then some other random people it's like completely from all different walks of life which was kind of a red flag in and of itself and like I was about to ask him like hey embarrassing question like have we ever met in real life um so yeah <laughs> it's just kind of a weird thing that happened today but um I have another split shift day today so it's one 49 and um, I have about two hours before I leave to go back to the gym for a few hours this evening and so I should get some reading done. So I'm going to set myself um, a timer or something like that and then I'm going to read a chunk of this and then get back to the woman in white. So there's some really interesting um, kind of commentary on feminism or really like on the patriarchy. In this book so I'm just gonna take these completely out of context a few little quotes here so this is uh, Marion Holcomb speaking she says men they are the enemies of our innocence and our peace they drag us away from our parents love and our sisters friendship they take us body and soul to themselves and fasten our helpless lives to theirs as they chain up a dog to his kennel and what does the best of us and what does the best of them give us in return then we have if only I had the privileges of a man dot 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 being, however, nothing but a woman, condemned to patience, propriety, and petticoats for life, I must respect the housekeeper's opinions and try to compose myself in some feeble and feminine way. And then what I just read, this is a um, the Count. He's a, a friend of Sir Percival's. He is a, a Italian man, and he's referring to he and his wife both signing as witnesses to some document. And he says... This cannot be if my wife signs as well as myself, because we have but one opinion between us, and that opinion is mine. Not to mention the fact that we don't really know yet why Anne Catherick was put in the asylum in the first place. We just know that Sir Percival funded this private asylum um, residency, if you will. You guys, I just can't tell you how obsessed I am with these protein pancakes. They're so freaking good. So final update as I end this vlog, I get my blankie over me. Um, having some, um, the, the weather is definitely changing even though our, our highs are still, it's be like 85 today, it was 90 yesterday, but the morning is cold and it's giving me really bad fibromyalgia pain. So I just have really achy legs right now. But as I'm reading updates, so I'm now just about halfway through The Woman in White. We finally have The Woman in White back actually in the picture and continuing to enjoy the book. It's just, it's a slow Victorian book, but I'm enjoying the whole way through. Um, the husband is just a misogynist brute who wants to control Laura and her money. And it's really cool to see the ways that it, they're kind of fighting against that. So we're kind of right in the middle of that struggle. And that really is more of the storyline with now with the woman in white kind of in the background, although she's come a little bit more in the foreground right now. It's just a secret about stupid Sir Percival Glide that we hate. So um, we don't know what that secret is yet, but um, the sisters are trying to find that out. So this is going really well. I decided to DNF a Blade So Black. I got about a hundred pages in and I just don't care 
just not doing anything for me, so this is out. Um, I did, however, start T.L. Huchu's The Library of the Dead um, last night during some Blackween sprints, which um, I didn't realize when I went to pick it up that it is by a Black author. So that works. So I have something to read for, um, for Blackween-a-thon. So that is what we have going so far for, gosh, we are three weeks into October now. I can't believe how time, how fast the time has gone, but it's going really well for me. And I think um, it's, it's looking like The Woman in White is gonna be my primary read. Um, I would really like to pick up, I forgot to put it on my TBR, but Three Men in a Boat is one I've been thinking about. And then Cranford as well. I would love to at least read, cause I think there's like three, stories or novellas in the Cranford like bind up that I have and so mean like read like the main Cranford still um I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get to it or not but yeah there we have it um what are you reading for Victor? are you participating in Black -a, -a thon or any other um any other October booktube let's say holiday booktube event love to know thank you for watching see you around the tubes